how do you know the difference between crying because you are a victim versus being self-absorbed? Yeah, that's a good one. And it's a good one because I think the number one thing that comes to mind to say is don't judge what it is. I like that you are, and I'll explain that. Crying is a release. So let's just honor the release. Let's honor releasing the energy is a beautiful thing. Let's go right there and just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me cry. Do you know how many people there are in the world that can't cry? I think my mother would be okay if I exposed her on this, but my mom is a dear heart. She's been a nurse all of her life. She's an angel. She's been through so many things and seen so many things sat with dying patients, had tragedy in her own life. And yet there's an element of her that just doesn't cry. It's very rare. I think I've seen her cry maybe three times in her entire life. And it's not that she doesn't have a feeling. She just isn't able to release that. So first of all, be really grateful that you have that ability to release because releasing is so important because if we don't actually have the physical release, whether it's a cry or a shake or a screaming or anger or some release of the emotion, we're just trying to control it. We're just trying to manipulate it. So whether you're a victim or you're self-absorbed, mm, I don't know. I like that you're asking that because it means that you're not wanting to be, you know, more in like the narcissist tendency. And I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying, you know, that would be like the, the full spectrum of, of self-absorbed. And you're also not wanting to like see yourself as a victim, which is nice. Cause then you know that you're the creator of your life, but I don't know how important it is to really determine that. I think what's important is to get to the crying part to get to the emotion part, like what is creating the crying without judgment, without judgment, because I think it's actually self centered is what you want to be doing, not self absorbed and not being a victim, but you want to be that like deeply self centered person that's in there saying, yeah, I'm feeling this. I don't like that I'm feeling this. I mean, a lot of times I think we feel that way. Like, I don't like that I'm crying because it feels like it's out of control or it feels like, you know, like, why am I crying or why should I be crying? And if you can get past all of those judgments, because that's the mind, that's the mind trying to say, um, you know, something about your own self-worth or your own whatever, and just get into it, get deeply into the tears and let the tears roll, let the tears roll violently if they need to. I don't know why I said violently. It just came to me meaning like dramatically, right? The more dramatic you can be sometimes, but then there's that fine line of like, Hmm, okay. Am I just like really out of control because I need attention, which I don't think is the case. Um, and sometimes we do need attention and that's still okay. But it's like, at what point then do we say, okay, I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to sit with this and I'm going to own the emotion that I'm experiencing because I want to release whatever that is. And I want to get to the core of it. And then once you get to a place where you're kind of like, you've let some of the shedding go, then I'm a big proponent of journaling. I'm a big proponent of quieting the mind. And sometimes that's hard to do right when we're really emotional. So that's why journaling and getting the hand coordination to the actual journal, I think creates an energy and an intention. It creates an intention that I really want to get to this. So I would start to journal and I would start to really feel into that and then rest, just rest. I can't tell you how many times that I've been on a call with someone who's crying and upset and we walk through it. And then all of a sudden it's like this, Oh, let me just collect myself and act like nothing's wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Everything's great. Right. It's such a, it's such an innate response to want to pull ourselves together so quickly and be like, Oh no, no, I'm okay. You know, you're not okay. And it's okay to not be okay. Cause that's where the juicy stuff is. So then rest. So then rest, get a good meditation, get something that inspires you, something that makes you feel like you can surrender into the not knowing this, the not knowing. Cause that's, you know, that's the mind that wants to know everything. So when we get into the space of the peace, of not knowing and being okay with the not knowing that's when we're really 
inviting our higher self to come in and support us. Instead of looking to someone else outside of us, a situation outside of us, you know, a job, a relationship, a friendship, all of those things can come in and support us for sure. And they will, and they should to some degree. I don't like the word should, but when we're looking for them, sometimes that's the time when we need to release them. We need to release the ideas that someone's coming to save us or that somebody needs to come and save us because we're already saved. We're, it's our sovereign self that we're, we're begging to be in touch with. We're begging to, to come to. I mean, look, if you're watching this show, I know that you're on the awakening journey and you're deeply immersed in this. So I can say that to you, that you are searching for that soul sovereignty, that connection, you know, that straight up North star um, feeling to our higher self and to the light and to the love that lies deeply within each one of us. It's never gone. It's just a perception that somehow we're separate from it. Please, next week, 1111 11 Sundays, submit your questions, bethbell.me slash question. There's so many resources over there. There is the Awakening and Healing Handbook. We've got the Psychedelic Resource Guide. So if you're considering any spiritual medicines, it's a great guide to have. There's so much jam-packed information in there. There's also the Herpes Handbook. So if you don't have herpes, you may know someone who does. And it's a great guide to really get through the viruses of the mind that we just do not need to be experiencing, the judgments around all of these viruses, and so, so much more. The most important thing that comes to mind to share is what is your state of the heart? Where is your heart? Because that's where we need to be, not in the mind, but in the heart. So if you go to bethbelt.me, you can get a free state of the heart assessment. There's, I think it's about 21 questions and they're very specific and we'll send you results based on your responses, which state of the heart you are in. And there's some tips, tools, techniques that come as a result of that as well. Now, if you want to go a little bit deeper on your journey, like if all of this is resonating and yet you're like, ah, I want to have more, more interaction. I want to have more deeper discussion, apply for the awaken inner wisdom membership. It's not for everybody, but it's certainly for people who want to go deeper in the journey where we go into all things spiritual, all things expanded states of consciousness. And I would highly encourage you to apply to the Awaken Inner Wisdom membership. You can check the links below. I would love to see you next week on Awaken Inner Wisdom, 1111 Pacific time. So until then, wishing you much bliss and love on the journey. Namaste.